Good morning. Today is the 27th of July and uh, this is Festival of the Unexceptional 2024 and uh, Ian Seabrook from the Hobnut Channel unfortunately is not here so you've got me instead. That was your chance to uh, quit whilst uh, you can because we've got an awful lot of filming to do today viewers probably eight to nine half hour parts if you're not up for it then that's too bad you're on the wrong channel for it i do apologize in advance for the wind noise if i get things wrong if i fall over generally this is a terrible series of videos you were warned of the title so we shall uh, do the concourse section first and uh, there's a lot to see so uh, we better get on with it i suppose look at this 1982 triumph acclaim this is identical to the one that um, our neighbours had when I was growing up this one I think is a really low spec I think it's an L actually I can tell that immediately by the uh, <laughs> lack of the head restraints in the car I think that's probably an L windy windows and everything one thing that you do get is uh, a rev counter, if I can actually show you that. There we go. Um, the reason for that is because all the acclaim dashes were very similar, I think. Um, so they decided to fit them all with rev cams, otherwise, we wouldn't have one. Next, a Yugo 45. Not just any Yugo 45, this is quite a special one. The 45A that I drove um, on the channel last year actually did a, a walk around of um, in 2021, I think it was is not as uh, well racy looking as this 1988 model we've got various accessories on this such as these sort of body kit and things I mean, why you fitted body kit to a Yugo 45 I, I don't know but the condition of this is absolutely superb it's um special it's a 45a as well it's just a 45a with a body kit on it wow um nissan blue but there's a couple of nissan bluebirds here actually um, the Bluebird Premium, this is a very, very late T72 Bluebird. This is one of the very, very last of them. They finished production on um, on an H in 1990. Um, why did it say 1987 on it? I'm very confused, viewers. Yeah, if it's an 87, it must be a late registration. Okay, so it, it's probably a T12 then. What is going on? I should read the information sheet when I before I start. 1987 Nissan Laurel, so the last type of Laurel they sold over here. I have actually filmed a Laurel on, on the channel before, not this type, the previous generation. I think that was called the C31, maybe this is a C32. Um, this is the last generation they sold. They, they imported the Maxima from 1989. There weren't big sellers over here, the Laurels. Um, and, but that is absolutely beautiful. It's got the uh, 2.4 engine SGX. I imagine only maybe one or two specs sold. Normally Nissan with the Laurels only sold like one or two specs at a time in this country. Then we've got a Daihatsu Sherrod. BK is an old ports of plate, it's an automatic. Um, yeah, it's a one litre CX Auto from 1987, an early one of these. I have driven one of this generation actually, it was a much later one, it was in 1992 I think when I drove, uh, with a 1.3 engine. That is um, special. I think those are the correct, um, yeah, they are the correct wheel trims for it. But we've got a 1984 Vauxhall Nova. This is one of the cars that I sort of uh, think represents this area of General Motors very well. The sort of Opals and Vauxhalls of the early 80s, like this one, often have these brick red interiors. And look at this sort of cliff face dashboard. Again, I have done a walk around of an early Nova like this. I've driven a later one. Funny enough, the one I drove was actually at the concourse section of Festival Unexceptional in 2021 I think it was or 2022 I can't remember um, one of the trips saloon but that is a very early one actually they started importing in 1983 but that's in 84 then we've got a Fiat Bundo this is a selector which is pretty rare actually it's um it's uh, the automatic version with the um, 60 horsepower engine um, I think the selector was roughly equivalent to an SX model this one is a pre face so yeah, it's in 1996. I have driven two uh, Mark 1 Puntos, and actually they are, for their time, very modern cars to drive. <laughs> Something else I've driven is uh, a um, 
course of B, an early course of B, like this one, this is a 94, those alloy wheels would either be an option, or I think they're of a sport model actually, or maybe they're an option. They look good on it though. It's amazing that given the propensity for voxel paint, that's particularly paint red, voxel, red voxel paint in the 90s to fade, this car is perfect. Uh, the LS is um, a bit kind of more highly specified than the uh, Merit that I drove. Um, got a few more options on it, but not loads. I mean, you would have got, for example, wheel trims on an LS. You don't get them on a Merit. Then next, you've got, a, I think this is a Volvo 145. It's a facelift one. I can tell it straight away by the door handles. Actually, that's quite a luxurious one. It's got a rev count and everything. Um, relatively late for one of these, then. Um, it's for 240 came out actually the same year as 1974 which was um, very heavily facelifted one of these and they continued of course till 1993 but this was uh, the last year for the 144s and 145s um, amazing another Nova this time a saloon from 1990 it's just before the final face the final face was in 1990 um, see if we can actually look at the specification of this one I mean, again, voxel red paint from the 1990s wasn't necessarily the best. It's a 1.4 L. It's a bit faster than the one I drove. That, that one only had 45 horsepower. It's just got a bit more. Um, it'd be a uh, Family One engine in that. And we've got a uh, Phase 3 Mark 1 Renault Clio. I have actually driven one of these. It wasn't exactly this model. It was, a, I think, an, an RL Versailles. It's sort of roughly equivalent specification to something like this. I imagine this will have a 1.2, um, it'll be, yeah, the one, yeah, it's a 1.2. Um, that's uh, the D, uh, D, uh, D7F engine, I think it is called. Um, there we go. It's not the uh, Cleon font, it's a bit later than that. Again, that is that's really, really clean, that. Ooh, and a Lancia Zeta. We never got this over here, actually. Yeah, we got the Fiat Ulisse, I think they could call it, and the Citroen Synergy and a Peugeot 806. I hope this is a petrol engine, viewers, because, uh, as you'll find out soon, there's certain things we don't discuss on this channel. We'll choose a turbo. Excellent. <laughs> be quite fast, though. It's like some Netherlands, that one. Um, yeah, it's one of the, called the Eurovans, they call these. I don't think there are many left of any type of these, actually, over here. And certainly, well, this is the only one of these I've ever seen. I've never seen one of these before. And then we've got a Mark II Clio, a very early Mark II Clio, being 98 only, uh, the oldest Mark II Clio in the country. Of course, it's a 1.2, it's a very similar engine to the one in the Mark I. And it's just an RN, which is um, sort of one from the bottom, I think. Well, the bottom one was the RL, I think. Oh, something, again, very rare. I have actually driven one of these. I drove one last year in October. This is a 1986 Toyota Carina. This one is a bit more luxurious. The one I drove was a 1.6 GL. I think this must be a GL Executive. Yeah, it's a GL Executive, which is the other trim you could get. These are really, really rare now. The tailgate of these tends to rust quite badly on them, but this one's perfect, which is, which is great. Look at that. Wow, that is ex except, uh, exceptionally unexceptional. Then um, we've got a late Panda, I think the uh, these were discontinued in this country in 1995. I've only just driven one of these, and it is actually here today, the one I drove, which was uh, just before Practical Rest Restoration Show back in, Mar in March, which was, wasn't rustable. Uh, this one is a bit more luxurious, it's a uh, um, CLX, I think it is. This one's actually got five-speed gearbox, which the one I drove did not have. Um, it could have done with that, really. The brakes on this, well, yeah, you got it used to them, shall I say. But it's in really, really nice condition, actually. It's very straight and original. Then a Rover 100, please don't call it a Metro, because it wasn't called that at the time, but everybody does anyway. Um, this is a uh, 1995, so it's from the first year of production. It's uh, probably a 111i, 111i Kensington, which is one of the special editions. Then a 1998 Subaru Justy, thinking, hang on, that looks very, very much like a Suzuki Swift. Well, they, they were built in the same factory in Hungary, these. And um, it is very similar. This has actually got all-wheel drive. Some of the Swifts also did, um, but this is, yeah. 
absolutely amazing. I used to see these around other Swifts and these normally quite lurid colours, actually. Um, I've had this for a different time. I didn't think these got airbags, but that's actually got an airbag in it. Right, we're going to have to skip um, that one, viewers, because I'm afraid we can't talk about those on this channel. And we're going to go straight onto this um, Fiat Brava. Yes, it is the Fiat Brava that Mr. Richardson from Furious Driving used to own. It's a 1.6 um, SX Automatic, I think this one is. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Mr. Bushby, yes, we we know Mr. Bushby. We've driven many of his cars before. Mr. Bushby is actually here in another Fiat. Then we've got um, a nice Mark IV Cortina, 1.6 GL. If you aren't getting nostalgic, if you grew up in the 80s and 90s right now, I, I don't know <laughs> if you've actually got a soul, because this is just absolutely part of everyone's childhood, isn't it? Even if you didn't know one, you'd seen him around, you'd know somebody wearing one of these. Um, let's just check the actual year. I've not got a little um, uh, cardboard thing there. Uh, it's a 78. 1st of August 78, and there is the lovely 1.6 Pinto engine. Also lovely is this very, very late Lada Riva. They stopped importing these in 1997 because they couldn't get the engines with carbs, yes, with carbs, um, and catalytic converters to actually go through Euro 2 emissions regulations, so they stopped importing them. You can see it's a 1.5e with a catalyst, um, problematic catalyst, but uh, here it is. That is really straight, really nice. Oh look, I don't even have to say anything, you're advertising your own channel. I am, yes. Wow. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Uh, th thank you, sir. And uh, <laughs> also you? this gentleman here. Yes, I see. He's got, he, he he's got, he's got himself into the concourse section. How's that happened, Joseph? How on earth are there two cars here together that I've actually already driven right, right next Is to each other, right? sir? Only two, Joseph. Well, there are only two in the concourse that I've driven yeah. so far. Right. I'm sure there'll be more. Can I just get Joseph? Because Joseph's so no, well no, no. We're going to have to see. We're going to have to see Joseph on this camera. No, we're not, sir. <laughs> he, he looks very dressed for Concord. I, I look like a complete pauper by comparison. You look like somebody who's advertising their own channel. Very good, sir. Okay. So Simon's car here, um, Mr. Parr's car somewhere here. We'll have to get later. Simon's car is a 1990 Mercedes-Benz 190 two-liter automatic. It's very, very nice. I don't think he actually even paid that much money for this. They're not worth tons of money, these standard 190Es, which is a shame because it, it, it is, it's very nice, this. It's, 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 it's an incredibly kind of unexceptional in terms of the colour, but it looks like Nardo Grey, which is amazing. It drives really nicely. They're not fast, these. They are not fast at all. They are amazing. And then we've got another Mr Lloyd here. Good morning, Jason. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Um, and as we were saying, another car I've actually driven on the yeah, channel. Yeah, you did a great job, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It's not very different from when you last saw it. But... Sir, I, I, I have my loyalties now divided because we've got two cars here that I've driven in the concourse section. And we've also got other Dave Lannisters here as well. I've seen a base model I that's seen here. A base model five door. I know. Model, but this, is, this, this qualifies the concourse, it's the right age. I, I know, sir. It's a 97. It is. Um, that is a 2000, that, that's base model. It is. Um, sir, thank you for bringing it here today. Any time, thank you for going to drive it. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, we've got all the service history and documents on the back. Here we have a sheet that shows um, all the competitors at the time, so all the C-segment cars you could buy, and we scored them. And the green shows what's best, the red shows what's worst. If you look at the Dayu, which is down there, it's neither best or worst at anything, and it scored three stars. So it's the, it's the definition of unexceptional. So it, it, is un it. it is unexceptional. Thank it's you a, very much. particularly a 1.4, because 1.6 is kind of half, half decent to yes, drive. Yeah, it's yeah. all right, this, but it's, right. it's, it's okay. It's just a 1.6 is better to drive. <laughs> Fair enough. But, but okay, we're at first for exceptional. Anyway. Right, sir, so I shall continue with Enjoy. my shambolic Thank shuffling. Thank, Thank you, sir. Yes, Mr. Lloyd and Mr. Lloyd, that is not a mistake. Um, look at this, 1986. Peugeot 309 GL. This is a, it's an early one, isn't it? I think 86 was the year they came out. I think it was sort of on a C, but this is on a D. Again, just <laughs> I think I think these actually don't even have the TU engines. In. Some of them have got some of the old Sim Capacity engines in. Them. I can't remember this one has, but um, wow. 
Right, we better get back to uh, sort of where we interrupted. Oh, can't talk about that one. How about, how about this uh, BMW E30, this um, pre-facelift one here? Um, it's kind of similar to the one that I I drove actually earlier this year, but this, this looks like it's a lower specification one. And indeed it is, it's a 316. It's literally a 316 on a carb, so it's a, the absolute base spec. Still got fog lamps though, it's 86, so just before the facelift. And another 309. 309 style, which is sort of towards the bottom of the range, actually, the 309 styles. Uh, this one's a 1990. I'm, let's look at the back and we'll actually see if this is a facelift one or not. Yeah, this is a facelift, actually, this one, compared with the last one. One of the ways you can tell is the, the boot opening is actually different on the facelift cars. But yeah, three door, correct wheel trims. Um, one of the things I've never managed to do is drive a 309. I'd love to drive a 309. That would be fantastic. But um, not managed it actually. And then a uh, 106 from 1992, an early one. They came out in 91. Got a little friend here, got a uh, little lion there. Goes from strength to strength. Gotta be careful what I say in case he attacks me. Um, an XN, which was again sort of quite low down in the range. Um, this might even have the one litre. That's right, I think it's a 1.1 this one. There was a one litre as well. Um, again, the, the TU engine in this one. That is, um, again, exceptionally unexceptional. And we've got another Bluebird Premium. Um, this is a 1989. This is a, quite late on in the life of the T72 Bluebird and quite low down in the range. Even though it says premium, we've not even got a rev counter or electric windows. Obviously, we're at first exceptional, so that actually counts for more if you don't have the electric windows. But that is, um, that is really nice. I've driven one of these. It was a... Uh, uh, 1.8 GS, which is probably too exceptional for this event, but there we go. Well, P10 Primera. We like T T a P10 Primeras very much, viewers. Very, very much indeed, we like P10 Primeras. Um, this one looks like it has come from somewhere else. We've got beaded seat covers, of course. One of the P10s have driven have also beaded seat covers, and that was a car that's also been on display here. Um, to you to SLX with a brown interior. Just like wheel trims um, from Germany. Obviously, the German spec ones are different wheel trims from the ones I've seen on UK Primeras. Also, not really registered over here is this Renault Twingo. We never got the Mark 1 Twingo over here. Um, this one, yeah, I think it's Patrick... Le Kimmel who uh, designed this would have been personally important at some point this is a 1997 um, Twingo Spring I wonder if this has got the uh, later engine it's probably got the later engine rather than the early Clayon Font engine wow another, another course of B this one is a merit I wonder if this has got a four speed gearbox if it's got a four speed gearbox one of the very very earliest ones take a look yeah when I drove was a merit you drive a 95 with a five speed yes a four speed gearbox yeah it's a very very early one this and it's got no rear wiper so those two things were actually options the rear wiper and the five speed gearbox were options and 93 was the first year they actually came out so that's uh, pretty good another mark one cab this one oh my gosh it's not rusty wow <laughs> exceptionally unexceptional um, unique examples. Washers operated with the scuttle. Is this just a base car or car two? Knowing this event, it's probably just a base car because it's got windy windows in it. I have driven um, a car. It was a 97 on one I drove actually. Um, car two. Um, similar car to that, I think. And then a Mark III Fiesta next to a Mark IV Escort, both on H registrations, both 1990. Uh, this one looks like quite a low spec to me. Oh, it's a bonus. <laughs> a bonus, didn't, you didn't get an awful lot in a Fiesta bonus. Not a lot at all. I think you just got some Jesse seat trim. This one, yeah, full speed gearbox. Um, crap wheel trims, everything, no rear wiper. So not an awful lot, really, in your Fiesta bonus from 1990. Um, had the old, um, uh, what did they call them at the time? Um, Later in GRE, it's sort of the one the lens here entered, and that's it. Uh, this all had be one litre or 1.1. It doesn't say on this one, it could be the 1.1, I suppose. Or... But uh, yeah, amazing. And then a Mark IV Escort, very late one. Some people say that these are better than the Mark V's they replaced. Having driven a Mark V 
Um, face of ones are all right, but pre face of ones, not so much. I have driven one of these though recently. It was a uh, 1.3L, I think, the one I drove. Um, this one is a 1.4 GL, so it's, it's decadent in every way. It's got the, uh, we call the CFI engine, which is a variant of CVH. And my gosh, electric windows. Goodness gracious me, and nice full uh, wheel trends. And then more larder action here. This is a 76 larder. One of my father's friends had one of these, actually, when I was growing up. It was a, a state just like this one. This is a 1200. How this has survived all this time in this sort of condition when these were just worth nothing for years, I have no idea whatsoever. But that is um, exceptional, exceptional. I must stop saying that. Um, and then a 1994 Reliant Robin, full of fiberglass and three wheeled fun. Yeah, I can see why somebody would want to put one of these in. And then we've got oh, really early Metro. They actually came out, I think, on a W. The early ones like this were called a Mini Metro because the Metro Camel, the railway um, manufacturer, didn't necessarily like someone using their name. But after a while, it was solved. So they called it a Mini Metro for the first couple of years. This one is quite a basic one. We've got no passenger mirror and no rear wiper, for example. Oh, I've forgotten the name of this colour now, but. Someone will tell me, won't they? Oh, the very, very early Alfa Romeo 145. They were going to fit the uh, the new engines to these, the twin spark engines, but they, they weren't ready in time. So the first few years, I think it's three years, they used the old boxer engines from the 33 and the Alfa Sud, 1.6, this one. I have driven one of these. It belongs to Mr. Richardson from Furious Driving. Um, drove that five years ago. That's not here today. He's in one of his other cars, but uh, that, is, uh, that is fantastic. Right, uh, next section. So, 1992 Ford Fiesta Freestyle with a 1.4 engine, the same in an Escort. So it's a bit, um, a bit more highly specified than the, than the bonus. Uh, we've got a rear wiper, for example, in this one. We've got a more powerful engine. I mean, we're not talking sort of um, luxury here. We have got a you know, five-speed gearbox and things, so we're doing relatively well, I suppose. I have driven um, one that's similar to this, it was a Fiesta Flight that was a bit more like a gear, had a few more features in it than this. Still no power steering though, and this one had power steering. Right, they are a bit heavy without power steering, but uh, I suppose in those days you just got used to it. And then we've got the Citroen Visa that's just been pushed in. We'll have a look at that in a moment whilst we give them a chance to settle that down. 1975 Triumph Toledo, um, LJT Cars, Instagram, YouTube, fantastic. Um, look at this, in this sort of beige colour. My parents actually had one of these. I can't remember if they had a, a, a two-door or a four-door. I please remember the two doors were more common, but they did make four doors. And also, you could also get to later for some market with a 1.5 engine. This would be the 1.3. Again, it's, you know, I, I'm more of a sort of Dolomite person rather than a Toledo person. I prefer these sort of 1850s and the sprints, but this is still lovely. I mean, in comparison to a lot of cars at the time, I mean, it, compared with the 1300 that it replaced, it is a bit less fancy, but uh, it's still rather good. Okay, let's have a look at this um, Visa. You just don't see these. I mean, um, it's particularly not one that's a special edition champagne model. It's a 1983, this one, facelift. So let's have a look at the dash in this one and see if it's a little bit less confusing. Um, no, it's still crazy because it's still a Citroen. The champagne model. Well, I wonder what engine this has actually got in it. Um, it's a Super E. Some of these have the uh, two-cylinder, but I think this is probably a little bit more powerful than that. Isn't that brilliant? Right, uh, we might come back to this section later on, but uh, yes, this will, uh, this will do nicely for now. Let's uh, go on to the uh, classic parking.
So we've done the concourse section for now. We will come back later. And then we'll start the classic park. It is still crazy. There's still tons of stuff coming in. I've got a long way to go. So we better continue. 1987-88, Volkswagen Golf Mark II CL. I forget the capacity of these. They didn't actually advertise them on the um, exterior of the car. So it's either like a 1.3 or 1.5, I think. They also made a 1.8, but I somehow think that's probably not a 1.8. Mark II Mondeo, 1997-1998, uh, this is a two litre gear model, I have driven two of these, they were both uh, two litres, one was a gear, one was a GLX, um, both saloons, this is a hatch, that's really nice actually, I like that, I like the wheels on that too, beautiful. MGB, of course, you can't get a classic car show without an MGB. We can see Morris Minor as well to be sort of complete. This one is in 1970, um, just before the fish mouth grill came in, I think. Um, very, very nice condition, actually. It just sort of sticks into the uh, um, Conkles eligible eras, which is uh, 69 to 99, although a few years either side doesn't really make a difference around here to the classic parking. A Hillman Avenger, and I'm not going to sing the song that Tim Hart released in 1979 about Hillman Avenger because I will get in trouble with copyright and things. But this is a GT, that's very nice. I think it, it'll be 1.5, and 1.6 is came, came in 73. So that I think is a, a later 1500. It's beautiful, isn't it? 72 73 plate. The Tigers obviously were even better. Uh, that high ace probably hasn't got an engine we can talk about, so we'll go on to the Saab 9000 CD. I really want to drive another Saab 9000. I drove a Carlson last year, 88 Carlson, um, but I want to drive a more standard one, and that would do nicely for me. I like the facelifted ones in particular, 95, 96 on an N. And then, oh, viewers. <laughs> yes. Have we peaked too early? Um, 92, 93 Jaguar XJS, no hyphen, um, in dark green with a beige leather interior and wood. I do like a nice beige leather interior, viewers. I think that's probably a 4 litre as well, which is my preference. The V12s are a bit complicated. Um, yes, I'd like one of those very much, viewers. Uh, very much indeed. Better move past it before I get too excited. Um, Fiesta Mark IV van, 1999. I imagine maybe we can't talk about that, so we better not. Uh, what does it say? It doesn't say. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah, I got caught up there, viewers. I better move on. Um, Vauxhall Chevette. Um, I've had his festival exceptional all over, isn't it? A beige Chevette. An L, which was the most popular model. I have driven one of these. It was a, a 1980 L Saloon. This is a pre facelift though, 7778 on an S. And we've got lots and lots and lots of um, Haynes manuals. I don't know if they are. Oh, they're free. That's very generous. Hang on a second, this has got the face of front end, but it's got an older plate. What's going on with this? That's really strange. I thought the car had a complete front end swap or something. Hmm, suspicious. Okay. Um, Toyota MR2, 1987. I can't remember if this is a facelift one or not. Oh, it's a, it's a facelift, a very early facelift. Okay, September 87. Very nice. Um, Right, 106 we can't talk about. Um, 2000 BMW E36 318i convertible. Must be one of the absolute last ones of these. Um, must, be, must be absolute last. It was on a W. I didn't realize it maybe E36 as late as this. Goodness me, viewers, they're still coming in. I have an awful lot of work to do today. Anyway, um, we better get on with it. Thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment below, and we shall see you again in part two for more incorrect information.